Welcome Walnut. I'm Lara, but you can call me Laz, your host for Walnut Wednesday. This is your reminder to be brave, be yourself, and know that you can make the world a better place just by what you decide today. Here, I'm going to share my weekly walnutings with you on a Wednesday. Hello Walnut, it is me Laz for another episode of Walnut Wednesday. I am so excited because this week we have a guest, Rachel. Hello. Hello, I'm so excited to be here. The energy is amazing. I love you. I love you. (laughs) um, Yeah, I'm Rachel Simington and um, I live in the States in the south I'm sure you can tell from my accent um and I live on I'm looking out right now you can just imagine if you listen just want to close your eyes I live in the best place ever I mean well exclude politics but I live <laughs> where I live is the best place ever um and I am sitting in my mat like in my you know bedroom and I'm overlooking a gorgeous private lake that is covered in ice and snow and it's like a winter wonderland and there's a hundred acres of woods I'm looking at, and it is just, it's so beautiful. I love it here. Um, so just to give you the vibe of, like, where I'm coming from. Yeah, and, yeah. you want to just plug your Instagram so that if people are listening, because I, I am obsessed ooh. with watching your story <laughs> all the time, maybe that um, the listeners quickly. I mean, if people want to follow me for my house, I won't be <laughs> mad about that. Um, because it's worth it. (laughs) I need to post more in my house. Um, yeah, Rachel dot Symington, S-Y-M-I-N-G-T-O-N. Um, you can find me pretty easily. And, um, Um, It's like the successful lazy bitch. That's me. It's my name. Um, But yeah, I live um, in a house my grandfather built in the 70s. It is like the coolest place ever. And he also worked his business with the moon. Um, I am uh, indigenous on, well, on both sides, but more direct from my mother's side. Um, It is a specific sect of Cherokee and uh, my ancestors also knew the sacredness of their moon time and working with the season so this is literally what I'm made to do and that is what I like teach that's my business is I share how feminine beings can work with the cycles that are impacted at any moment including their menstrual cycle the moon the seasons everything and how to integrate that into their life and then my my sweet spot is how to integrate that into like your business and like what you want to bring into the world and how to do that being a lazy bitch because I refuse to do it any other way (laughs) because I'm I'm a really lazy human being um and I just yeah I refuse to be successful if it means like being exhausted and burnt all the time so that's me that's what I do I love that so much and I've got a friend of mine um she's teaches human design and stuff and one thing that's really resonated why I love her so much and I have chosen her as my like kind of teacher for that kind of thing is because she refers to herself as a lazy generator because generators are typically meant to like you know do all the things all the time but like I don't feel like fucking doing that kind of stuff all the time sometimes it my my time is best spent watching Netflix and no pants, you know? Um, yeah. If you're <laughs> wearing pants while watching Netflix, you're honestly doing it wrong. So I yeah. stand by that. <laughs> so I really love your your lazy bitch kind of branding and, and themes and stuff like that. Do you want to maybe talk how that kind of came about and how you kind of created mm-hmm. it? Sure. That's a really fun, like, story for me to tell. So it started – I mean, I – I guess we really want to start I started when I started learning human design um, from one of my really good friends, Tiffany Purdy, and um, we've been friends for years and years and years. And um, when she first got in human design, she's like, Rachel, you're a projector. And I remember thinking she was the only person who I knew in like, quote, this industry, but like someone who's doing their own thing and not the traditional mm. stuff. Um, and so I was like, huh, like I would love to do that, but if I have to do it like this manifesting generator who honestly was like overworking, admittedly, self-admittedly was way overworking at that time. So this is like late 2018. Mm -hmm. I was like, I cannot do that. If I have to do it like that, I can't do it. And I looked at people, you know, like 
higher up in the industry. Um, not Amanda Francis, but that's the only word that's coming to mind, you know, people like that. And I was like, I can't fucking do it like that either. Like I don't have a team, like ugh, that all feels so gross. So when I learned I was a protector. It was the same time that I learned about working with your cycle. And I was like, Oh my God, like nothing's wrong with me. This is just like who I am as a human. And the fact that I don't have a lot of energy and I, you know, I'm terrible at finishing projects and I need a lot of help doing stuff. And I just, I don't actually want to do anything like, Ooh, okay. So, um, I basically had this epiphany of like, if I could just talk to women all day about their business and like empowering them to do it the way that they want it and make this impact in the world and just like achieve all of their dreams and um, you know, I didn't have the language that I have now, but basically it was, if I can help them be a successful lazy bitch, basically I did not have that phrasing then, then like, that would be my dream life. And, um, three weeks later I had like three clients that uh, just, and that, that's how my business just started. And I just, yeah, it, it all snowballed from there, but fast forward to like summer 2020 and I had just moved here. I manifested this house and you guys want, you know how I mean, you'll love this. Um, um, my friend, Anne. I'm going to butcher her last name. It's like the N G U I E N. Um, I I always mess up that name. I apologize, but, um, she does orgasmic manifestation and like teaches a lot of that. And I was at Mm -hmm. my friend's birthday party and she hired, she hired Anne to have us all do orgasmic manifestation on zoom together. It was the the best thing on the planet. Right. I know what I'm doing for my birthday party this year. (laughs) Yeah. I'm thinking, (laughs) birthday party choice with all your guests but anyway it was amazing um yeah an hour of showering my friend and how much we love her and how amazing she is and then an hour of that it was great but anyway I manifested this house um we got to move here um you know mid you know quarantine COVID everything it was really nice to get out into out of the city out of our tiny condo and um we got here and I it was the summer and I was like oh my I just want to be outside all the time. I'm tired of working so much. I actually don't want to do, I love the work I do, but like, I'm so tired of working from like, I had these things. I was like, I work from 11 to four every day or like, I think it was 10 to four. I was like, why am I working six hours? Like, I don't, I don't want to do that. Um, And my coach at the time, Julia Wells, I love her. She's amazing. Um, That's whose birthday party it was. (laughs) And um, we, uh, she was like, well then why, why do it then? can't you just get what you want done in like two hours a day? She's, and I was like, um, we'll work with my clients. And then two hours a day, she's like, cool, do this experiment to see how little you can work and how much you can still get done. And I was like, I like, fair enough. Like I'm pretty comfortable financially, um, where we live super low cost of living. My business was pretty like even keeled and consistent. I was like, cool. I have the space to like, give this a whirl, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, and I did it. I loved every second of it. I spent, I'm looking at my lake at my dock right now. I spent every day, like every waking minute, I would just like be down swimming with my kids in the lake or playing outside or going for walks in the woods, actually enjoying my fucking life for once. And uh, I was like, this is fun, but I want to work even less. And it just like slowly progressed into this thing where I was like, and then I started partaking in cannabis more consistently. And I was like, okay, now we're really getting into like (laughs) It was a wonder. Well, honestly, my business skyrocketed after that. It's a totally other conversation though. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, it's totally legal here, by the way. Um, (laughs) Not Not in New Zealand, if you're listening. (laughs) Uh Um, So anyway, and it is, it will be legalized this year, but anyway. So um, I just really was like, I was redefining what successful looked like for me. And success is a feeling. I have a podcast about this. I have the Bleed and Succeed podcast. And um, I haven't made this announcement, but it will be successful Lazy Bit podcast for this next season. Oh, yeah. I mean, I already <laughs> know what kind of name as it is, but this makes it even better. And I know. Um, Walnut, if you are watching, you can see Rachel's hoodie. We were going to be twins, but the delivery hasn't uh, quite happened yet. So we will be twins another day. But um, no. Rachel's got these really delicious, comfy hoodies that I'm so excited to get mine um yeah such a good name okay anyway I digress yes successful lazy bitch um and I was really having honestly the cannabis really helped open my mind a lot to like what does success mean to me especially as I'm like kind of low-key stressing about like my business and stuff you know my business is doing perfectly fine Mm -hmm. um and 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 money and I'm my husband's stay-at-home dad I'm still provider so sometimes I can really feel that pressure on myself 
So as I was redefining, I was like, I have to work and work and work. And I was like, but take a minute and look around at your life. You already are successful. And this goes for anyone. We often think of success as a destination, but success is a feeling. So when you think of like, okay, when I close my eyes and I think of success, you think of maybe for me, you know, it's like I have um, a house with plenty of room for my kids to run around, lots of land, amazing friends, um, you know, a fulfillment in what I do and being loved and doted on and yummy food and all of these things. And I was like, those are great. Those are amazing. But what, it, what feelings those emit? So it's a feeling of worthiness, a feeling of fulfillment, of, of love and space to grow and connection to nature. That's what success means to me. Um, sure, money helps fuel those things. I freaking love money. But when I think of success, money isn't actually what comes to mind. And so it's not a destination. It's a feeling. And I have access to those feelings right now here. Like, I, ha- I can feel loved right now. I can feel fulfilled. I can feel, um, you know, this connection to nature. I can feel all of these things. So I am already successful. So when you, and I have a whole class about this and believe in the sea community, by the way, it is fucking fire. I'm just going to tell you that we danced to Ariana Grande's uh, successful, which is great. I was in Maiden when we did this. Um, so I was like, real that you've done on that. Like a, I've yeah. watched it like, all of the views on it are probably me because I just like I just let it rerun because I just think it's so cool. I love that it. was that was a clip from that class because oh. I was like this, these vibes are too good to like not reuse. By the way, that's one of my hacks of being a successful lazy bitch. Be it SLB, recycle your shit because I'm too tired to make up new stuff all the time. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so I was like redefining what success was. Like I'm already successful, and I'm just gonna embrace me. I am lazy. It is what it is. I am a fucking lazy ass. And I love that about myself. I would rather watch Netflix than do anything. Most of the time, I would rather go lay down in the snow and just like stare up at the beautiful winter wonderland trees than like do and even freaking being here on this podcast. I would definitely rather be doing that, even though I love this, you know? So it, I was like, well, I'm just gonna lean into it. I don't know. I was, it was a really, it was honestly, it was I was high and I thought it sounded fun. <laughs> and that's how, what, it ha- that's how things happen. I, I talked about this the other day with, um, with <laughs> someone who was interviewing me and sometimes it just kind of just falls in front of your nose and then it just happens. And I think that's what a lot has happened for Walnut Wednesday as a brand. I'm doing air quotes. Right. Say, like, it is a brand. Yeah. But it's like, I still don't know what it is. And I'm just following little tiny things that fall in front of my, in front of my face. They'll smack me on the butt and go, oh, that could be cool. Let's try that. Rather than yeah. like a big full structure. Oh yeah. Like 10 to exactly. four, I got to do this or whatever, you yeah. know? So yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Things just, they do just happen um magically and it's quite nice to follow them and see where they lead you know (laughs) exactly I think it's hilarious I just gave you this full like background story of like how I created this brand I was like honestly when it breaks down to it yes there was stuff leading up to it which I think in context is great but at the end of the day I was high and it sounded fun (laughs) like and it it made my clit tingle I don't that's all I got for you and it's I mean I love it. It lights me up. It's so fun. It triggers people. It makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah. That's um, and that's so realistic. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think it's so real life. And that's what um, we are all attracted to as someone who we feel like we can relate to and be friends with. Like you and I are already like BFFs, <laughs> you know? So it's just like you find the people that you kind of mesh well with. And I think that's what yeah. you have is you have this realist realisticness realism real you have yeah. an identical vibe about you and it's just refreshing because sometimes you do see online the people that are really like go-getters and you know that kind of thing and, and while that's great and good on them good for them yeah it's not for it's not for me it's not know? gonna happen yeah that's and you know that's who I really like Cause I remember trying to kind of explain this to my mom who I just stopped trying to explain things to, but she asked, so I tried to explain it to her. She's like, I don't think you're lazy or a bitch. And I was like, mm, that's not, <laughs> thank you. But that <laughs> I like being both of those things. So <laughs> it's fine. Um, 
<laughs> appreciate the the intent behind that statement, but I really what it does is it gives words to what I said, you know, in reference back to in 2018 when I was realizing like, oh wow, I'm a cyclical being, nothing's wrong with me, I'm a projector. Wow, this is how I'm made. I just want to talk about women. Like, I want you to be successful, whatever that means. You I don't give a fuck if you want to be a coach or a a mentor or a, a, a nurse or a whatever. Like, if you want to be successful, I want to help you do that in the most gorgeous, lazy way possible because you don't have to do it the way that this freaking patriarchal capitalist run system that we're raised in tells you you have to do it. That's also why I like SLB brand because it's a big fuck you to the patriarchy like every day of my life and it makes me really happy. I love it. Oh, I love you so much. And <laughs> the reason why I actually invited you to, well, yes, but this is not the only reason I obviously invited you because I wanted to talk <laughs> to you and I love you, but um, I wanted to get you to teach us a little bit. Um, I mean, I know it's not a quick thing to teach, but could we get a little bit of a rundown on the cycle and um, how you kind of use that in your business slash life? I've only just personally started looking into it myself and just putting little marks on my calendar. So I kind of know, and it, it kind of was brought on by I've gone off of the pill and a lot of my listeners have uh, kind of in the same sort of thing. It's not to have a baby or anything. It's just to, I want to really be, bad for you. Yeah. I want to be one with my body. And I've talked about, I've had this whole, whole thing and I got lots of frights and I was like, Oh, okay, it is time. So, um, and I've been doing that for a few months now and feeling really, it's almost like it's impacting my intuition as well because I feel so much more I know what thoughts are mine and what feelings are, are mine it's kind of hard to describe but um yeah can we start on the period okay. menstrual moon chats absolutely so this is really like a basis of everything I do um because it's really hard to be a successful lazy bitch if you are not in tune with your personal cycles because the whole point is like, they're, they're not going anywhere. These energies, even if you're not bleeding right now, um, even if you don't have a uterus at all or anymore or whatever, every human being, especially those drawn to the divine feminine, have an energetic cycle. Um, we are impacted by the moon. Every human, uh, masculine people are affected by the moon as well. They're affected by the seasons. Um it, by the years that the cyclical nature it, it's all around us it is nature we are nature it is us and so um when we aren't aware of this we're constantly kind of working against it um especially those who you know identify as feminine beings we are stuck in this not stuck i don't want to use that language but we're in this patriarchal system where we've been told you have to show up the same every single day which is a very masculine centered uh, masculine centric thought process because their hormones if we want to go biologically cycle every day so while they kind of shift hormonally throughout the day every single day they can show up the same and that's beautiful I appreciate that I love that about them because it's such a nice yin yang balance yeah for the feminine but we can't fit into that yet we've been constantly forced to so we're trying to like go against it all of the time and we're wondering why do I feel like this like why do sometimes I feel this way, but sometimes I feel this way. I can never just show up and I feel all over the place and I'm wishy-washy and I'm emotional. And that has been told like that's, that means we're not good enough. And so um, by working with our cycles, it literally makes everything in our lives easier. We're no longer swimming against the current. So you're no longer using that energy to go against something that you're not going to change anyway. You get to just lean back and be lazy and float. Mm. Um, this takes a lot of like deconditioning, honestly. But it also like when you learn that there are really great times to do certain tasks and I'm not just talking about business. I'm also talking about maybe it's, um, you know, with your family, maybe it's with your house, with your friends, with your life. There are certain times where certain things are more optimized to put in that phase of your cycle. It makes it so much fucking easier. <laughs> and this was like my first awakening. It was like, yes, let's like optimize our cycle. Like your cycle is your superpower. That's where kind of my whole business kind of took off. That's why I have Bleed and Succeed community. Um, because we are, we, we flow through the four feminine archetypes through every phase of our cycle. And that's reflected in the moons and the seasons and everything. And so I'm kind of going to give you a little bit of rundown. I want to give you some information to kind of leave with so that you can kind of start to recognize this in yourself. And then of course, if you want to learn more, go check me out on Instagram. I've got Bleed and Succeed community. I've got really great, like 
introductive ways to work with me as well as my podcast has a lot of info. Um, Very good. 10 out of 10, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> 10 out of 10, would recommend. <laughs> go, go put that on a review on Apple. <laughs> Please and thank you. <laughs> um, so we, I'm going to, st- there's nowhere to start because it's a circle. It's a cycle, right? But I'll start with like the young energetic maiden that like breath of fresh air. So this is spring. <laughs> yeah. This is like the spring archetype. This is um, you know, we're looking at our lifetime, think like from the time you start bleeding till around, you know, think, I don't know if you're into astrology, but like your Saturn return time, like 2930. Um, this is when you are like, you've got a lot of big ideas. You have you fresh energy. Cause you like, you were just like, you just came out of the womb, right? You're ready to go. Um, and you are ready to take leaps to get what you want. And you have all these grandiose plans and you can see what's ahead of you. And you just want to have fun and live life and be flirty and do all of those things. Um, this is what we experience during the waxing moon and the pre-ovulation phase of our cycle. So like right after you're done bleeding, before you ovulate, that's when this energy comes in. So if you notice, and a lot of you're probably sitting here, my little walnuts, and you're just like, that's why I feel so good after my period. Yes, queen. So, (laughs) and obviously there's a lot more intricacies to this, but, um, and then we flow into what I call queen. Sometimes you might see this referred to as mother, even in my older work, mother, I changed it for various reasons. Um, I think that we as a human race in 2021 have a better connotation with the word queen and it more accurately represents what that archetype is yeah, versus, versus mother. We tend to see it as, I know for me, overworked, stepped on, doormat. Mothering and yeah. 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 And it is a nurturing archetype, but that's not all it is. You're mm-hmm. doing her a major disservice by saying that's all she's good for, which is what society tends to do. So um, you flow into queen during, you know, around ovulation. This is that full moon feeling. So this is like, oftentimes we feel pretty good around the full moon, right? Um, And it's also summer. Like, so this is a resting phase. Maiden is active. Queen is resting. And this is a time, oh my gosh, it's so fucking gorgeous. So it's, it's, it's a yang bright, right? Full moon, summer light feeling, but it's resting and this is just think summer like where you just get to go outside and roll in the grass and just be and maybe have barbecues or cookouts or whatever um this is a time of like sacred self-care to reflect to see like oh wow how did i you know do building everything over the last in when i was in maiden um and what do i need moving forward it's kind of a check-in point It is like mid-cycle rest. Like, let me give all of my creation space and time to grow while I just be and take care of myself. And it is, it's my favorite. That's the one I identify most with this lifetime, Mm. Um, which is why I give off huge big sister auntie vibes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe that's why I became a mom at 20 by choice, mind (laughs) you. (laughs) Why I decided that, I don't know. Um, I mean, my kid's great, but you know. And then we flow into Enchantress. And so this is when the light starts to disappear. So, right, we're going into autumn, the waning moon. So we're going from super, like, the top of the biggest light we can to it starts to disappear. So these are more the yin times. So Enchantress is a yin phase, but it's also an active phase. And so this is your premenstrual phase of your cycle. Um, And this is where you can often see, like, the moodiness, the irritability, the ups and downs. And that's totally super valid. I still often experience that sometimes. But what we have to look at is Enchantress is the wild woman and her energy comes in like, I call them peaks and valleys. Oftentimes we're like, I have no idea what I want. I'm just all over the place. No, Enchantress knows exactly what she fucking wants. You're just not listening. There's a difference. Yeah. And so learning to flow with those Enchantress peaks and valleys. And she's such such a fucking creatrix and magical manifester. I mean, I'm telling you, Enchantress is powerful because it's this yin, like subconscious time, but you're, it's an active. So you're able to channel that through what you do. Um, she also takes no bullshit. So yeah. that's one of her superpowers. Like each one gives you these really beautiful things that you wouldn't want to experience all the time, but you're so grateful you have them. And changes like think like social justice. Um, like people have been walking over me, I'm not gonna put up with it right now. Like, so this is my this has been coming up a lot with my work with my clients. 
if you're in this premenstrual phase of your cycle and shit's pissing you off, don't just say, write it off of, oh, well, I was just PMSing. It's fine. I'm good now. Like, right. Once you start bleeding and you kind of calm down. Um, yes and no, <laughs> maybe not as big of a deal as you made it, but it is something you need to listen to because Enchantress is showing you what is not serving you and what you need to declutter and get rid of out of your life. And so if you're frustrated with something, take that into account, write it down. Don't do anything about it while you're bleeding. Wait till you're, <laughs> wait till you're in maiden or your next cycle, but do something about it. Like, listen, it's there for a reason. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And then um, we, we move into Crone, which is, you know, your bleeding time. It's winter. It's the new moon. It's quiet stillness, death. It is the old wise woman. That's where I'm at personally in my cycle. Um, the only reason I have a little bit of energy right now is because I just got out of the bath and some food and I've been taking care of myself. But this is a time to like really be still, to rejuvenate, to have that, that life cycle that's constantly repeating of life, death, decay, rebirth. Um, and oftentimes we can try to push through that a lot, especially in our society. Like, oh, I'm just bleeding. I'll, I'll be fine. I can show up like I do in Maiden. Um, it's going to end in frustration and anger. So if you're experiencing a lot of anger in Crone, and I don't know why I'm sharing this. I'm just scrolling off of Intuitive. Someone who's, some walnut needs to hear this. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, so um, if you're experiencing a lot of anger in Crone, so when you're bleeding and you're just like, everyone get the fuck away from me. I don't want to talk to you, which is semi how I'm feeling right now. I'm going to be honest. And that's okay. That's super valid. <laughs> this is, we definitely want to be alone. Think solitude. Animals hibernate in the winter. The plants go into like, right, dormant state. That's what we're supposed to do as well. I'm looking out at this gorgeous winter wonderland right now. It makes me so happy because everything's so still and quiet and beautiful. Oh, and that's like, this is the time when we're able, if you're so still and the veil is thinner between you and the spirit world during this time. It's a super deep subconscious part of your brain and you can access deeper parts than you can in other phases of your cycle. So this is the time to maybe like do the spiritual work, um, do the witchy work, do the introspective, um, talk to your higher power, to your spirit guides, get those downloads. And a lot of people see this as a super non-productive phase. It's like, well, I'm tired. I can't do anything. What is she good for? Um, Y'all. Crone has made me the most money in my entire life because that's, I got an idea for SLB, like for successful lazy bitch during then. And it just, I'm telling you, I was just high and it came to me. It's because I was in Crone doing nothing and I was still in quiet enough to hear it. Um, and that's also this past cycle, a couple of days ago, I got the um, idea for successful lazy bitch school that I'm launching this summer and like, bitch, that's just going to make me a ton of money. I've already, like, I'm telling you everything. I was watching Netflix. I was watching rain on, on Netflix. I'm not even kidding. And I had to pause it, pull out my phone because it was just like, I just saw it in front of me. I had to like type it all out. Like I know how much I'm charging. I know what I'm teaching. I know when I'm running it. I know how I'm launching it based upon where the moon is, where I'll be in my cycle, everything. Oh my God. It's so good. Oh but anyway, holy fuck. It's going to be so good. <laughs> so anyway, um, I literally, like, my guys just gave me this. I, I'll show this with you guys because I feel like you'll love this vibes. I was just sitting there watching rain, and I don't know. My guys are sassy as fuck. So I just heard. It was like, um, it was create the SLB school and just become a millionaire this year. And I was like, my. <laughs> oh, my God. I love this. I was like, I mean, okay, let's do it then. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for you. I cannot wait to watch, watch Thanks. it all unfold. <gasps> yeah. So that's a little overview of very, very light yeah. overview. But, you know, that's like the energies that we cycle through and having a relationship with each archetype is like really what I teach. So yeah, I totally teach the practical aspect of this because like, right, we are human, having a human existence in 2021. We want to make money. We want to do cool shit in our lives but it's also like the spiritual aspect of like fulfilling you as a human and like you feel so fucking whole when you have a deep connection with each archetype and you've healed a lot of the wounds associated with that it's just yeah. so beautiful I love it yeah I have I've been just doing it on the scratching the surface of it myself and it's it is just small little, little things that you notice that have actually just been given 
me almost the permission to do the thing so like when I have been in my like PMS enchantress wild crazy lady phase um and I'm so fucking hungry like I'm like just feed me yeah. and I'm like oh actually this is my permission to get ready for my hibernation and you know like so it's it just gives you that little you keep doing that kind of kind of feeling as well and I'll also say biology I have a biology degree fun fact that's what I like went to college uh, for yeah. <laughs> um I thought I wanted to be a doctor that's really funny um yeah, a little bit <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I have all my prereqs for med school. I will never go. Um, but biologically, our bodies need more carbohydrates during that time mm. because, um, I mean, that's just what we need. So, of course, that's what we're going to crave. Um, but also, we crave polyphenols during that time because polyphenols will help counteract kind of the hormone shift that's happening that might cause, you know, night sweats or. Um, cramps or all of these things, even even moodiness to a to a degree, um, and polyphenols. Guess where you can find those? Oh my gosh! Yeah, yes, you can find them in like things like broccoli, um, and kale, like some green vegetables, but chocolate, real chocolate, cacao, really high in cacao and really high in like good red wine, like not like shitty sugary red wine, but like red wine I'm so <laughs> happy <laughs> so um this is your permission when you are an enchantress to have all the fucking dark chocolate and red wine that you want because it's for health purposes <laughs> I've got a little tear in my eye that actually just made me so happy that I can have that but I do I, I'm not a sweet tooth person but I always know when that time's coming because I do crave like a whole mm-hmm. I, I could you know there's little bars of chocolate I don't really I eat one in one sitting I don't really feel like if it was like three pies I would eat that but um <laughs> yeah but at that, in that time I can like definitely eat a whole block but because I don't eat that much chocolate all the time I always get headaches afterwards as well so it's yeah it's a funny like thing but thank yeah. you for the permission for the red wine and chocolate and I'm not saying like sugar too much sugar will actually make you feel pretty shitty yeah but I'm talking like go and get I know I like the Theo and Lily brand I don't know if they're everywhere but I know they're in the states um but Theo and Lily brand they're all organic real cacao like fair trade um, everything. And I will get those. I get like the orange or the sea salt one. Mm. And then just, I mean, I'm not a big glass of red wine. Like the one that's so dry, you have to sip it. Oh, chef's kiss. Oh my gosh. Okay. I cannot wait for my, that next couple of weeks to come around. (laughs) I'm going to definitely try that. And, um, Uh yes, but Rachel, I have a couple of questions from, um, a couple of ladies in the walnut tree. (gasps) Um, cause I, yeah, I was feeling really crony and pooey and and um so I did a post and I said I'm actually interviewing somebody da, 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 if you've got any questions so Bronte she asks um she said that she's really excited for this episode and is excited but have you got any tips on handling emotions and navigating the days leading up to and then the period phase of our cycle so the two the enchantress and the um crone phase that um yeah. we were talking about and I think Charlotte also yeah, I find I easily get aggravated and frustrated in the three to five days leading up. Then I look at the calendar and laugh because I know why. So she's wanting some, <laughs> wondering if there are some tips for the, I suppose, enchantress phase totally. that you would recommend other than the totally. red wine and chocolate that you <laughs> um, Those are super helpful in a biological way. So just, you know, tell your friends, tell your partner, be like, this is actually a need. Uh, this is not a want. This is a requirement. Rachel said so. <laughs> Um, use me as an excuse. I don't even care. But um, yeah, these are really great questions. So um, there's a there's a deeper aspect to this. I'm going to give you kind of like a deep dive and then like kind of a more um, not surface level in a bad way, but a more like realistic, practical, applicable way. Mm-hmm. So on like a deeper spiritual level, oftentimes this aggravation comes from a resistance to the wild woman a resistance to like, wow, I'm so upset and frustrated, right? Like, wow, I'm not putting up with this bullshit. Like, wow, I am like all over the place. Like one minute I'm like feeling super wild and creative. And the next I'm like really kind of like just want to be kind of crony and don't have a lot of energy. And without having the awareness of that, this is normal, that can feel really jarring. And what we tend to do on a more like, you know, surface practical brain side 
is we're like, oh, well, if my physical energy is up and down so much, my something must be wrong emotionally as well. So we tend to attach our emotions to like our physical ups and downs. That's one thing that I noticed. So when you're able to detach and just have the knowledge, like, okay, I'm just in an enchanter's peak. Oh, well, I'm starting to flow into an enchanter's valley. By the way, I have super specific, like navigating PMS and the NCC community. So, <clears throat> um, <laughs> in there, <laughs> I, um, I also have, um, a breath work on lessening cramps. So you're welcome. Um, uh, yeah. So <laughs> I do it myself. Uh, this is like, it's just something that we tend to associate like, wow, something's be wrong. What's wrong with me? I'm all over the place. And like, you're pissing me off and, and I'm so just like tired and I just want to do this, but also I'm having all these creative ideas and I don't have to shut my brain off. This shit still happens to me sometimes. Like I'm a human. Um, this last cycle was really short for me. I don't know what's going on and that's fine. And I was like kind of thrown off with how short my in and intense my enchantress was. And I was, I was like, <gasps> I started bleeding early. I was like, no wonder I just wanted to cry all day. Like, <laughs> anyway, I was going to kick my kids out, you know? Um, so it <laughs> still totally happens. But some ways that you can kind of navigate that is one, like, of course, healing your relationship with the wild woman, letting it be okay that you know, you are very picky. You know exactly what you want. Flow with that and stop trying to control it. So if one minute you want to like be writing down all of your ideas and the next you're fucking dead and want to go lay in the bed, that's fine. Um, if you want to be, you know, alone and people not talk to you, do that's it. That's what you need. So do it without guilt. Um, and what I'll also say is, leading up to th three to five days before you start bleeding. So like, I call it end of enchantress, like beginning of crone time. Um, story creation mode is super like, it's turned on <laughs> in our brains. This is a super easy time where your brains can pop off with stories. And I've experienced that more this last cycle than I have in probably a year. Um, it just means I'm like definitely in a, I'm in a big growth phase um, just personally. And so that definitely shows up in my cycle, but um, yeah, don't let the stories mean anything about you and recognize like, okay, I'm in this phase of my cycle. These are just stories. Everything's okay. Like I will see, I will see things differently in a few days. Think back to how you felt when you were in queen and ovulate and everything was beautiful, wonderful, and fine. And remember nothing, most likely nothing's actually changed in the last week except for your perspective. Yeah. So, so take note of the things that are bothering you. Don't discount them, but also don't let your brain go off with stories and let them mean something about you because that's generally where the moodiness and irritability is actually stemming from. Ah, oh, I love that. Thank you. Thank you so much for those. And I just have a little story of, actually, it's not even really a story, but I always feel like that there are just like, in terms of how you feel about your body and, and stuff like that, there are sort of maybe like two or three days of the month where you feel like a sexy, sexy, delicious, tasty snack. And, yep. then the rest, and then there are other times where you're just like, oh, oh <laughs> I am such a troll. And I think it, when you, when you do know kind of where you are at with that, it kind of does help as well. Because I had this, I did this little test with myself. I took like a, a gym selfie the other day and I was thinking, oh my God, I look so hot from the front. And then I looked at the size, like, oh, you're not that great. And then two days later, I looked at them again and I posted them and I was just like, they look the same, <laughs> you know, like, uh -huh. eh? so it's yep. funny, it is all, um, I'm learning at the moment, how you feel is, impacts actually what you see and, and how things happen at the same time, so it is, the whole, whole awareness of, of all those kinds of things is so interesting and a really good way to live life. <laughs> I actually have two thoughts on that. So one is my quote is that, and I say to my friends all the time, I'm like, your feelings are super, and my clients too, but you know, your feelings are super valid. Your feelings also don't reflect reality. And as someone who is standing from the outside and has a wider perspective on your situation than you do because you're in it, I'm telling you right now, like your feelings are valid. You're allowed to feel them and not feel guilt about them, but they do not reflect reality. I love that. That's thought number one. You're welcome. Go quote me on that. <laughs> um, and then number two is, so this is like a fun little thing. 
those days when you feel super sexy. Okay. So you're probably going to feel super sexy during queen around ovulation. That's just like biological, like a hey, come impregnate me. Not really. Um, <laughs> actually, no, <laughs> I have too, I have too many kids already. Um, <laughs> I have a six year old and a two year old for reference. <laughs> so we we're fine for now. Um, but the other is, um, also an enchanter. So the wild woman, like she's like also known as like the seductress, the wild woman. Of course, she has her peaks and her valleys. So towards the end of Enchantress, she might not be feeling the same way. But I schedule my pictures for when I am at end of uh, Queen going into Enchantress. Like that, there's like a week range where I know I'll be in that sweet spot. So if I need pictures done, so I'm doing rebranding like boudoir, sexy ass SLB pictures. Um, I did originally plan it for when I was like just at the end of ovulating the beginning of Enchantress because I knew I was going to be fucking hot shit and I was going to feel it. We had crazy ass snowstorms and in the South, we just don't know how to function with that. <laughs> so we, everything got canceled. So it will now be when I'm in Maiden, which is also okay. But um, that's when I like try to optimize sexy ass photo shoots. So just heads up, you're welcome. Oh, I love that. Maybe even for like going out when you have like a new outfit that you want to wear is like, that's probably a prime time to like wear the outfit or, or go, yes. and, go and, um, like when you're kind of like nervous, like, I don't know if I can pull this off, but like, I want to, and you want to yeah. be like brave. That's the time. Yeah. That's definitely the time to do that. Oh my gosh. I love it. I just want to keep talking to you for so much longer, but <laughs> before we wrap up, Rachel, you've already, yes. um, um, told us your Instagram and about the Bleed and Sexy community. But can you just give what the Walnuts a quick little recap um, of where they can find you, how they can work with you? Um, oh, find you. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can find me on Instagram. I'm pretty active on Facebook too. It's just my same name, Rachel Simington. Um, so yeah, there's definitely some great ways to work with me. So right now, um, kind of I don't call it like entry level, but kind of like available for everyone. I don't have a limit cap on how many people can join BNS. Um, that is available always. Um, it's evergreen and um, Bleed and Sexy community. I have the link in my bio. You can DM me and chat about it. It's on my website, <laughs> everything. Um, and then I also have um, my Lazy Bitches Mastermind, which is the fucking tits. Um, so group A is already started and going. And this, oh my God, we just met yesterday. It's phenomenal. Um, literally my goal, I'll tell you this, my goal for my clients and everybody is that they are so lazy and everything so fine that they get bored. I want my clients to be bored. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see one that I'm making like little faces like with my eyes open like, oh my God, I want to be in this. <laughs> um, yeah, my goal is that you're so lazy and um, you know, like you trust that everything's fine and so supported that you're, that you're bored and that you're forced to kind of be like, okay, who am I outside of what I do? And like, you realize your value isn't dependent upon what you do and bring to the world. And you just get to like explore who you are as a human being but because Avi, you're so successful and lazy at the same time. Oh my God, I it's, love that. Uh, it's amazing. So I have round two, I have, right now I have four spots available. I have a couple more sales calls, but I only, I keep them really small, six um, people in it. We meet once a week, it's amazing. Um, and then I will have, at least one private session opening up in March. And um, that's going to be the tits, but I'm keeping those really like, if you want my energy to be one-on-one, -on -one, like, okay. Um, and then I also, this summer, I'll be doing successful lazy bitch school. If you want to just get on the wait list to hear more information about that, I, I don't think the link's in my bio yet, but I'm going to get off here and make sure that it is because y'all need that. So when I release more info, it'll be, it'll be coming out my summer, not your, not your summer. It'll be your winter, but um, it'll be coming out in like June. Oh, delicious. And I think that, I don't know. I feel like winter is a good time to like go to school about this kind of stuff for sure. Um, actually, that's exactly why I planned it during, um, it'll start right before the solstice. So for us, the summer solstice, for the winter solstice, because those yeah. are both resting or being phases. Um, and what a great time to learn to be a successful lazy bitch Delicious. in my opinion I know right I love it I love it I'm so excited I'm so excited and um <laughs> I do have a question that I ask everybody Rachel um yes who visits us but I mean I feel like you have been a walnut in your in your business and your creation and I feel like you have had to be quite brave to be like to 
let it out and be yourself and be like I actually don't want to do anything blah blah blah, blah. so <laughs> I would love to hear what what your in your opinion what does being a walnut mean to you I love this question um so it's so funny I was I was just explaining this to my friend you know and she's like what is that I was like I don't even know and I do exactly at the exact same time so if I can try to like quantify it and put it into words because I know no answer is wrong here but being a walnut to me is just like literally being whoever the fuck you want no matter what anybody says and um like I don't want to call it like being unique, but like for me, it's like embodying like, yeah, I am a fucking successful lazy bitch. And like, that gets to be okay. You know, like I am this person. This is who I want to be. I'm going to fully express that. And it gets to be weird. And a lot of people get to not get it. And that is like, what's beautiful about it. So to me, that's what being a walnut is being a weirdo. (laughs) I love it. Yeah, it so is. Just be being yourself and being being a weird, crazy banana that you want to be. Mm-hmm. Oh, like I said, I just feel like I want to keep talking to you forever. But thank we can you. talk after you stop recording. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we probably will. Um, is there anything um that you feel like you haven't addressed or haven't said a final mm. message that you want to say to the walnuts before we go? Mm. The only thing that I would say is like don't and I'm channeling this, but like, don't hesitate on becoming your version of what an SLB looks like. Like whether you work with me or not, I don't care. I just want this to spread far and wide. You are available to only work two hours a day if that's what you want to do and, and have those feelings of success in your life right now. You don't need to earn it. You don't need to work your way up to it. You don't need to be like, well, I haven't made any money in my business yet, so I can't be that. Like, no, that's how you make money in your business is by being that. And you deserve to have everything that you desire just because you are, because you exist. You don't have to earn or deserve things. So like, don't think this is just because I built my business up to the point where I can be this. Like, no, this is how you build your business and how you like build your life. So that's my last thing. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was delicious. Um, so Walnut, if you enjoyed this episode, share, tag Rachel and I on the Instagrams, on the Facebooks, on all the things and comment and let us know like what you enjoyed and jump into the Walnut tree if you want to have further discussions on, on any of this or get in touch with Rachel if you have any questions. So yeah. yeah thank you for your time walnut and rachel thank you again i love you so much and i love you love you love you talk to you guys soon